Hello everyone and welcome to the Two Have and Two Roll podcast. My name is Oliver. I am but one half of your hosting duo. With me, as always, is my co-host Robin. And joining us on this show are our guests, Jim and Dylan. Jim and Dylan create content for sword fighting, TTRPGs, and they also have a channel where they cover LARP, and specifically Empire LARP here in the UK, the LARP that we go to under the name Fake Swords, Real Feelings. If you're watching this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. That would be much appreciated. If you are new here, consider subscribing to the channel. We are also available on Spotify and iTunes. If you are listening on those platforms, giving us a five-star review there will also help us out. We do have a new Patreon set up if you want to support us in that way. You are under, of course, no obligation to pay for our content. You can do so completely for free. And with all that out of the way, let's get into our conversation with Jim and Dylan. Hello everyone and welcome to the Two Avenger Roll podcast. I'm here with Robin, but I'm also joined by, actually, since we've got, we've got two extra voices for audio <laughs> listeners, actually, guys, do you want to like give yourselves a, um, a shout out so people can match the voice? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that makes sense. That yeah. makes, doesn't make sense. I'll go second. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Is that twice. a paradox? It doesn't yeah. matter what order you go in. <laughs> Just know we'll think of whoever goes first is the leader. Okay. Mm. Uh, well, then I will definitely go first. Uh, my name is Dylan. Jesus. I, I am one half of Fake Swords and Re- Real Feelings, and also part of Heartfire Tales. Which we'll but we'll get into that, I'm sure. Uh, and then I guess with me is my lowly, lowly underling. <laughs> Sorry, uh, can I talk yet? I'm so yes. sorry, sir. Please, please. I'll let you come, come, out, come out of your cage, Jim. Come out, come out. <laughs> Speak to the people. Entertain. <laughs> wow, interaction. Hi, I'm Jim. Um, I'm let out on Tuesdays and Wednesday, Wednesdays. Uh, I'm the other half of Fake Swords, Real Feelings, and Heart Fire Tales. So you, you said it yourself. Fake Swords, Real Feelings has to be yes. the best name. I, uh, you. A lot we were podcasts. so jealous when we saw that <laughs> name. We were just like, oh, come we, on. We've heard I it a lot. It. <laughs> uh, if it helps, I think we peaked as human beings when we came up with that name. Like yeah. that's the best thing about our channel. The and name we'll never is be better than the content by far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's that good a name. Like the more like you, you hear it and you're like, ah, oh, that's good. But the, the more you know about <laughs> LARP. The better it is, and it's, it's frustrating that I didn't come up with it. I'm just like, especially when you go and you start talking about things like, oh yeah, you know, like catharsis. So there's so much of catharsis in LARP, and I died, yeah. and and you know, just because, and I'm just like, I think I stopped myself saying it at at one point during a podcast. I'm just like, well, yeah, like the swords are fake, but the feelings are real. <laughs> like, Don't stop yourself. We need that advertising, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like growth. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen that. Like I've seen with like external audiences who don't do like um, LARP. I do like we'd be like, oh, we have this thing called Fake Swords, Real Feelings, and they'd be like, huh. And then you say it to someone from LARP, and they're like, oh, that's a great name. Yeah, that's the <laughs> I mean, the stark difference. Like it gets yeah, it gets better every time. Every time you hear it. So what? So what made you guys start? Because you you started out in um, like you said, you've already said you've got a uh, the Half High Tales, which is a uh, TTRPG podcast. Yeah, I yeah, should yeah. play. I should play. So, did you? What made you switch? Well, you haven't switched from it. What made you uh, start coming to Empire? Well, in fact, actually, when when did you start? I'm assuming you came the same time as we. The same like event 22. as you guys, I yeah. think. Yeah, E1 22. I think the first one yeah. after yeah. the extremely long dark. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So do you, do um, you get caught up in that in that wave of like hype that the long dark seemed to like so for us yeah we it's our ttrpg people we're also cosplayers as well and with that long time stumbled across empire and went that oh, looks I... like my so, so I, it's I, a I, funny I, one <laughs> i'm gonna jump in with what's gonna seem like a completely unrelated anecdote but then Jim's side of the story will hopefully explain. No, let's do it. Let's, it'll be like a yeah, Simpsons episode. It. It'll be fine, right? <laughs> so I got I got married in January of 22. And we, me and my wife have been planning it for a long while because it was a secret wedding. Um, we didn't know. 
or we didn't want any of our friends to know that they were coming to a wedding. Um, we didn't want to have this whole like engagement thing going on. And so we were like, wouldn't it be really, really funny if we had like a surprise party? And so she's German. And so for like the round birthdays, like 20, 30, 40 and stuff, it's usually a really, really big thing. So mm. it would be natural for a lot of family and friends to make a big effort to come over. So we're like, okay, perfect. This all lines up. Um, we'll pretend there's just a surprise birthday party for her and actually spring, spring it on people that no, it's not a birthday party. You're here to watch us get married. Everyone lost their minds and you know it was a whole a whole big thing i love that idea by the That's way as amazing. Well. <laughs> oh it was it was it was great and so like jim was uh, my best man at it and so obviously a few people had to know because you know there's like the whole legal side of getting married and you know we had to like organize things like that and so jim was one of the very very few people in the know and jim decides that he also wants in on some of this secret secret surprise action you can't tell me there's underhanded dealings and not let me you know <laughs> be involved <laughs> like i yeah. want the cloak and dagger stuff <laughs> you know yeah so that's how uh i i had never heard of empire um it wasn't we are D D players and mm. you know we're really into like kind of role-playing through ttrpgs and that kind of thing but yeah like LARP had kind of been one of these distant things we'd heard about and be like, oh yeah. And, you know, we've seen role models and things like that. And I was kind of like, oh, is it cool? Is it not cool? Well, we'd well, seen role models sure. on one hand and then we'd seen like Drakenfest on the other and we're like trying to be like, and even then like low-key, I was like, that looks sick when I was watching role models. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it looks very, very fun. It does look very fun. Like, like they're, is that a fucking centaur? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, yeah Jim no, decided to... Uh, so the other side of the story, which is actually related to Empire, yeah. is um, context was, is important, Jim. One one of the big things about a wedding and being the best man is that your duty is to do the the stag party, right? And one, I'm a loser, so I don't have much experience at that. Oh, and then I see this two, is going. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> two, it was a secret, so I couldn't be like, oh, hey, all the guys, let's go do this thing. Why? No reason. Mm. I had to be like. <laughs> What can I do? What can I do that involves that I can do with just Dylan and me, you know? And like LARP had always, as Dylan said, been kind of orbiting everything we do because we do a lot of martial arts. We have like sword fighting channels and stuff. Mm. Um, and we're just like insanely into fantasy fiction, you know? Um, so I was like, what can I do that'll bring all this stuff together? And the, the obvious answer was LARP, you know? Um, so I was like, I'm going to sneak him into a LARP without him knowing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it'll be his his stag party. So I started plotting like an evil genius um, without the genius part. And <laughs> I, I made a group chat with uh, Sarah, Dylan's partner. And I was like, all right, I need to one, get him to England. Two, I need him to have made a character. So then I came up with this completely ham-fisted story oh where God. I was like... <laughs> Hey, my friend is developing a TTRPG. Oh, no, really? <laughs> and, and he needs to beta test the character creation. Would you jump in and help me? Did and Dylan you was fall like, for this? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> well, it's not that he didn't fall for it. He just didn't engage at all. I'm he was nah. like, he was like, ah, sure, yeah. Like, this is really simple character making, like, compared to 5e. I'll just do it on the day. And I was like, yeah, but I really need you to do it now, please. <laughs> and then I went in and, like, I was going ham and my hype was building and building and building and building because I was like wiki this you know YouTube yeah. videos this XYZ like really <laughs> like immersing myself in Empire and Dylan had no clue any of this was happening um, and like I was on the forums I was talking to like Jeffrey Willoughby on the forums and stuff and I was like well we like trees and we like sword fighting so we're going to be tree knights um, and you know we're going to have green and gold colours which is either one you know uh, uh, coincidental or institutionalized nationalism. I don't know which way it actually came out. Of. <laughs> the, the but uh, <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, Navarre is trees. We're going to be heavily armored knights in Navarre, not knowing anything." Like, oh, and right, and yeah. someone on the forum was like, "No, let's stop for a minute." And they kind of <laughs> pulled me back, and they were giving me all this history. And as they were telling me all this stuff, I was like, "I." this is too much. I can't just dump Dylan into this. It will be stressful. Like, you know, um, and then 
COVID ramped up again and they closed the event. So what, so what um, year was this? Was this like before, this was, before COVID? This was during COVID. So, so this was, like, I yeah, think... Because it went up and down, didn't it? Like 2020, 2021. Yeah. Everyone was like, oh, are they going to? Are they, are they not going I to? I think it up? was E4 21. Uh, um, okay, yeah. That we had been aiming for. Uh, no, I, no, I had, I had been, been aiming for. for. <laughs> yeah, because you got um, married in the January 22, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so then they they axed it and they said no we can't do it X Y Z so um, my hype was at a peak and uh, I was like I can't maintain this on my own so um, Sarah and myself elected to tell Dylan um, and then Dylan freaked out because he was like oh my god I never would have enjoyed this <laughs> you know <laughs> I uh, would have hated that <laughs> it, I would have looked I loved the idea and I think at the time I was like that would have been so cool yeah great and then the more I read about Empire I was like Ooh, I'm so so I was like there's like five bibles in the wiki I was uh, like, yeah, yeah I was like I'm so glad I did wasn't just popped into the world and been like mm. yeah off you go don't know I had game. <laughs> kind of um I had planned for that with like the typical um mm. I was gonna be like, Oh, we're not from Empire, we're visiting. And then um someone was like, No, nah, you're not allowed to roll that kind of character. And I was like, Oh <laughs> okay. Okay. I see that. <laughs> so, well, at least you had Jeff on the on the forums. A hundred percent. Yeah. Jeff would definitely like, keep you right with Dawn and he he's a, he's a, an encyclopedia himself. Oh no, you absolutely Dawn, did. You know. Absolutely did. Like and then um Yeah, I, I ended up being like, Oh, I'll go as like the wizened knight and you can be my squire. And then, like, they were like, "That's not how Dawn works." <laughs> I was like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> so once, once then Dylan actually got on board, and we could start properly planning and stuff. That's when the ball started rolling, you know. Um, yeah. and we rocked up. Um, all these great intentions. Uh, like it was going to be his his test of metal was to prove himself oh, yeah. to his his love, and that was going to be the whole theme of the stag was to. I, again, I was that's like, a, "That's a good idea, though, Jim." That's that's, so that, that, that's I was awesome. very proud of my idea. It is a very good idea. Um, it's a good execution, idea. but it's it's one of those that you like Less when you so. actually think about it. I think the thing is, LARP. I don't think Empire just doesn't lend itself. I don't think you could totally do that with LARP. I think it would be great, mm. especially if the person's LARP before. Like, if someone yeah. were to do that for me. I, I think it would be great if they were like, hey, surprise LARP, Ollie. And it's like a one-shot LARP. And they're like, oh, here's, yeah. here, here's the rules. Here's, yeah. here's your character. Go. And that would be great because it would just be like an improv throwaway. Like, oh, that was a fun weekend. But I think, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, Empire is, is, is real deep to be yeah. like. And you it's... could just not have a good weekend. <laughs> yeah. And I think um, as well, you know, obviously I wouldn't have had, I would have had the barest minimum of kit going into it had we gone in you know um so while i very much appreciate the idea and the thought behind it, and i think it was great i i much prefer how we then actually got into it um yeah. mm -hmm. and I, okay we actually then had you know whatever but basically a long dark to prepare for it and really get going so yeah it was yeah, great you got, and your then... own, you got your own house and everything right you got your own like we yeah. do, yeah. yeah. We have um, House Glade Warden, mm -hmm. uh, and I, yeah. I actually, that's the one thing I did stick with is it's trees and knights. So yeah. I would say House Glade Warden is as close to Navarre as you can get without leaving Dawn. It's yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty. It, so did you, did you want to go like knights, and that's why you went Dawn, or did you just go, hey, I, I like yeah. Dawn, and that's that's where I want to be, or is it just like, oh yeah, it was knights fun. first. It was right? knights first, yeah, and then um, it was suggested that we go Dawn because we like the whole vibe, like I've. I, I'm a mad one for generating um like house lore. So I had like all this stuff like front loaded for like the house um that suited us that we could kind of like augment stuff from our other um passions yeah. into, I guess. Yeah. Cause like as I said, we did the we do um an incredibly niche YouTube channel called <laughs> Way of the Heron, where we take the sword forms from <laughs> the wheel of time. Oh and my we... god, I was just about to say, oh my god, you do Wheel of Time stuff. Oh my yep. god. We do, yeah, yeah, go check <laughs> oh, it out, Way of the Heron. Oh, oh man, I, I would I would ask you about what you all thought about the series, but this this podcast will become <laughs> an no, entire yeah, Wheel of Time thing. completely different, <laughs> different don't sphere even, of conversation. Don't start I'll come on to your show and we'll talk about that. Basically, we were trying to like dovetail all that together. So like we made a house where the whole vibe was like that the, the house tradition is sword forms and like we strive to perfect ourselves by perfecting these sword forms so like we went in and we both got like 
huge like big big swords yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know oh, yeah. um and we had made all these wheel of time ass sword forms for them so we were like oh this is you know um soren's cold embrace and there this is no way. You know, oh, wow <laughs> <laughs> And we have a little publication in the game where, like, it's like this is all the sword forms that House Gladewarden trains. Come train with us, and we'll teach yeah, you them and all this really kind of great sword. Well. It's too, but, too um, bright. That, no, oh, no, you, that's you, amazing. You can't, you can't see it. That's that's really cool because that that's definitely like a, a law focused thing as well. Like you know, you know, like you get these old martial arts. I'm not calling your sword forms like crap, but like you know how yeah. like the, the most interesting thing about like old martial arts books is just the fact that they are in book form and you just see yeah, like yeah. that these, yeah. this is the thinking behind this form. It's probably not practical whatsoever, but oh, it's really cool. These are not practical. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, they're not good. <laughs> now, now some of them we have just basically ripped actual fencing techniques and actual yeah. hema techniques mm -hmm. and be like yeah this is an ox guard this is a high guard and then it's like this is how you do a basic feint and then some of them are like yeah. here's how you dive over someone's body as they're coming to you and it's like yeah, i mean it's fun it's a fantasy thing yeah. that we're doing so. i, 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 I... Do want to see that you have enough people with coming to get trained by you that we end up having a full choreographed style flash mob um <laughs> kind of thing going on in the middle of the battle where it's like oh there, there's all the knights <laughs> that were trained over there Make <laughs> you should come say that. <laughs> um <laughs> uh, can i wax lyrical about this for a second do you mind yes. if i go on yes. a nerdy one <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm yes, really proud of it. Someone else has to listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> so the way we did these forms is, and it's a really nice merging of like actual stuff and then the lore of Empire. But we have them all based around, and this is a coin. I'm a, a phrase I'm not coining, but stealing from Brandon Sanderson. Um, is realmatic theory, right? So you've got all the realms in in Empire. So you've got the summer, spring, day, night, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've we sorted all these forms into like day, night, summer. So like the summer ones are like really energetic, like big energy moves. Um, and they all have names like you know, um, oh, what is El Eleonorus? Eleonorus, is it? yeah. Eleonorus's proud charge and all this kind of stuff, and it's about like charging nice. down a line. But nice. the winter ones are like, um, Hail all about like. Yeah. Have, have you got achieving the sword like winter one? We do. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, it's called the brace. Perfect. It's basically like if Perfectly you thematic. If, if you need to give your life to to kill your enemy, you embrace death yeah. and kill yeah. them. Yeah. And, and 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 in that same way, you embrace you take Kayla's embrace. So Kayla's yeah. cold embrace. Yeah. And you're like, mm -hmm. I I welcome Kayla's mindset of everything has to end and i'm going to tie my end to my opponents <laughs> and it's got a picture of somebody like throwing themselves on a knife oh so God. uh yeah no it's real it's real fun um but we have them if you ever want one come find us in the field mm. it's called the glade warden yeah yeah i'm naming <laughs> so you, like you guys got like you say you do a lot of, like sword fighting and things like that how did you find the actual lop combat i'm assuming that was the first time you've ever done any like because that was one of the biggest like crazy moments for me mm. and what people draws people to empire is those big battles like it did yeah what did you think yeah of that, that was like the main thing we it? were we were looking forward to um obviously that's, I said, that's like, what we went for like really, we like. like we have got a martial arts background you know and as we kind of alluded to earlier the the lore of empire is so dense that we're like okay even if it takes us a while to get into that side of things hitting people with swords we can do you know that's what that's what we do to each other anyway it actually so, earned us a reputation what was it cali called us oh swords. sword himbos yes it's like glade ward they're those sword himbos sword. right yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think like i i really enjoy the fighting in empire it's very very different um mm -hmm. and obviously so like the the main ones is you know you can't thrust generally um unless you've got you know specific kit for it and you, can't, safe, yeah. and you can't bind always so like <laughs> always you know use protection when you're trusting um, <laughs> but so like it was very very different and so in if anyone i don't know if you guys have done martial arts like karate or taekwondo or something or maybe some of the people at home have there's like the concept of you know point fighting which is mm. very much you hit first get back get a clean point and, and it's the same kind of concept. So 
kind of for us, we were like, okay, well, we kind of just have to do it like that. You can't get into prolonged scraps necessarily, or you can't get too physical with it because, you know, you want to be um, respectful yeah. and, you know, safety conscious for, for everyone that's there. Yeah. So it was a bit of a, like a mindset shift. I mean, mindset shift and we weren't really sure how to deal with it but like mm. you know the new pair of skirmish was fantastic and yeah. to kind of get our heads around that and be like okay well what are we how are we going to do this and then yeah i don't know i really enjoy it. i think um i think combat is still probably my favorite part of empire yeah, although sure. i'm enjoying the the rest of the game you know almost it, it went from being like 80 20 to kind of 60 50 how much i enjoy combat yeah. and outside of combat stuff yeah the one yeah. thing that was big new for me and i really loved was the lion combat and the the, the yeah, big yeah. scale combat because we've never done anything like that before yeah, yeah. you know and it's completely different like you could be the best duelist in the world but if you like you know if like you overextend, the person, yeah it, it really makes you think though doesn't it like how like how how fantasy s like well, wheel of time those types of stories where like i mean we, yeah. we love it don't we when like aragorn's fighting like all those urukai i mean that's that's epic yeah. but the actual <laughs> yeah. reality of that, it just dead, does like... not exist <laughs> at yeah. all, and it, especially when, uh, and then people people map that onto D and D a lot, don't they? So I know mm. I know you guys yeah. play play a lot of D and D. It's just like it it maps on that people think, oh yeah, they're just goblins. Just like we'll we'll know if like if there's if there's more of them than you. That's actually more real. I know it's a fantasy story, yeah, because yeah, it's not. Um, I, th- I think I think uh, who who said this to me. I think it was I think it was Danny Lupo who who explained this to me when we were talking about fighting. He's like, oh yeah, it's not if you're fighting uh, two people, yes, it's twice as hard as one. But when you're fighting three people, it's not three times as hard; it's six times as hard, and it yeah. and so it goes yeah. up. So you you can't take when when there's, when it's four against one, you're just like, no, I'm never mind a whole line. <laughs> yeah, I uh, that's it. When I was doing my grading, um, I can't even remember which dan of black belt it was i think it was either my second or third mm-hmm. and i had to fight against three people as part of it and like you know at first it was just like and i was made just basically do like an endurance slog of mm-hmm. just constant fighting and it was just against one person and they just my instructor just kept you know putting in changing in different people i was like okay keep going and then it was like okay next person in but the person on the floor currently say i was like okay against two people this is this is really really tough but then as you said like as soon as a third person came in i was like oh I've been put on my ass. I'm dead. <laughs> like I'm, I'm done. Like it, I can't. It's all about processing information, isn't it? Like you, you, you yeah. can process certain information from one opponent, but then, yeah. but now you have to process information from everywhere. So if there's three it does, people, you're it, like exactly. to... my, my techniques but went shift gradually down, and I was just like, I'm just on base instinct here, Panic, uh, yeah, and I've, yeah. I'm not doing proper technique. I'm just trying to push people away with my legs and it hope for the best. Hundred percent shifts between like when you're focusing on one or two opponents, it's like what I'm doing with my sword. Uh, your brain is like fully forward mounted on this person. But when yeah. you're fighting multiple opponents, you shift into this like instinctual thing of like, where are they? Like you're trying to keep track on, is there someone here behind me? Do I have yeah. to occasionally spin and throw something out to ward off? You know, yeah. then you get stabbed yeah. and it's all over. But <laughs> yeah. like it does. Which, which by the way, in, I think in most LARPs as well, that is usually what is happening. Because even when we're fighting, mm. it's very rare we're doing one-on-one stuff. You know, it's, yeah. it's usually, yeah. even when we're all fighting in the glory square, you're, you, you're, you're, you're like, right, how do I fight a pole arm? with a sword and shield you you can you know you yeah. can th- theorize that and go okay i could do this but most of the time in a larp the, there's going to be three or four or there's going to be someone over there of a pole arm that just jabs you and you didn't even see them and you're like you yep. bastard. <laughs> yeah that's exactly it <laughs> that's the, the only on. time there's ever a one-on-one is a duel really right yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, like, I can't remember ever, ever being one-on-one in on the battlefield no like, i think well because I, I think they used to do um like honor jewels with the Yoden um, did, oh, yeah. 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 And I think they, I think they only stopped that because it just slowed down. Right, yeah. It's two people battle. fighting and two hundred people watching, kind of thing. Like, right? Yeah. So I think, yeah. I think they, they did stop that. And usually, I think with with the the dueling because it is it's fake, but the feelings are mm. real. Uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> which is what. <laughs> people will just choreograph sort of sort of like yeah like know, wwe exactly kind of like. they're, they're yeah. like you, you get a sense of what is what is going on so like you're like okay well you know it looks like it, it would be a better story if i lose here or if this person wins or whatever so yeah it's, it's very rarely just like an intense one-on-one style of combat mm. you know and it's like, yeah. sorry go on 
Don't I was going to say like like what they did in the, the Glory Square in the the autumn there where they had the tournament. Um, I was so sad I missed that. Oh my gosh, it was incredible. It yeah. was like full on WWE <laughs> meets the Night Tale meets That's the so Glory good. Square and Dawn. Yeah. It was incredible, but you like like Oliver said, there was that sort of element of cho cho choreography there because it was quite cool for certain heroes to fall and certain villains to succeed and so on. And, and yeah, it actually leans incredible. into the drama of Dawn, like so. It's yeah, perfect for that. Hundred percent, yeah. <laughs> um, I love that. I I mean, Dawn. I I think a Knight's Tale is almost solely responsible. For Dawn. like Dawn, you know what? I didn't re I didn't realize how much until we watched it just to get ourselves hyped up for E one this mm. year. We Rob and I just sat and watched it, and I'm just like, oh no! Every single concept of Dawn comes from this movie because like yeah. there's even yeah. the because um, there's there's like even the obviously there's like a t you know the fact that he is not noble and he earns his nobility obviously goes through this big long test of metal, but then yeah. even like the scene where she tells him oh you to prove your love you must lose this tournament i'm like yeah he's doing a damn test of honor like that's, that's yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah <Every laughs> they, they have a whole girding a scene and yeah yeah yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. there was yeah. there was a few of us in dawn and we were trying to organize like the thursday night for like a projector um and a big showing of it in the glory square because oh, we were like, be like, like the way that usually like the the certain tents are near like, like the drondle tents got mm -hmm. like, enough of a flat side and that like, you could project, project onto it. it. Um, yeah. And like, I can't remember who it was, but somebody like wrote into PD to be like, hey, can we, are you happy for us to go and do this? Because we've got a projector, we've got the stuff. Yeah, yeah. But then it ended up being a bit of a question of legality of where they're allowed to show oh, it. Oh, is it a public it's screening? A public screening. Yeah. And we were like, oh, okay, so what we need to do is go inside someone's tent, right? <laughs> no, what you do is, no, what you do is you project, you invert the program and then you project it from inside the tent. So it's a private screening, but everyone on the outside of the tent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think as soon as you start telling people like publicly, oh, we're doing this thing. Well, I think if you just put it on and went, hey. You it's know, a quirky spur. Yeah, watching, yeah. A nice couple of mates tale. over. A little bit of Night's Tale, <laughs> no hand on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just picturing the, the the sound of Thin Lizzy playing really loud in the glory <laughs> yeah. square. It's like the, all of Anvil's like bloody dawn. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's just flighting. That's all it is. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just, We're gonna flight a whole movie here in the glory <laughs> square. I mean, it definitely gets you in the mood for oh, 100 for, for being Dornish. I wonder mm. if every nation has films like that. Mm. they've done that a few there's been a few sort of threads like that on facebook groups and stuff mm. where it's like i'll pick a song or pick a movie for every nation and yeah. like they'll kind of like fill them out but i, I can't yeah. now i can't remember i nope. mean i can Anyone? see like the league being like the three musketeers hands yeah. down like, yeah <laughs> well, oh I, I, yeah i think what a knight's tale does for dawn because one of the main things that dawn uh in its brief is like oh yeah we're not um European medieval knights because they they take away the chivalric honor code away, mm. away from it, which makes it very different. So a lot of those fit like Excalibur and things like that. They yeah. they they focus very much on that. Whereas a Knight's Tale actually, you know, the, the, there's definitely a, like a um, you know a, exactly. a feminist theme running through it, but very yeah. but, uh, very subtly as well. So they do actually throw out that like chivalry because obviously, yeah. like the main character, as soon as he tries to be chivalrous. He gets treated like an idiot, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean? So mm. I think that's the one that's closest to um, Dawn, one hundred percent. So you, so you, have you, did you, have you, are you still playing the characters that? Because in character, I, I don't know your two. I, I've had interactions with your characters. Are they the same characters? It's funny yeah. story. Uh, <laughs> no, I, no. My first character actually didn't make it past his first event. Um, oh, it's it's actually pretty. It's pretty fortuitous mm -hmm. in a way, right? Um, because we were all just playing, like laying the tracks in front of us, right? Okay. We had no yeah. greater story going on. Um, and we, we kind of, you know, when you find your people, we were there and we kind of clicked with this group and we were like, oh, you guys are great. We ended up going into the the field together and all this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Um, and we... You know, there was the the typical bit of early LARP roleplay is like, oh, let's count how many kills we get and see who wins. <laughs> and that was happening between me and um, Ben, who plays Percival, Car Percival Carleone. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it was like, oh, you know, 10, 11, 12, what are you on? X, Y, Z. And like, because of that, we were pushing it and pushing it and pushing it because the battle was winding down. We were going for more and more kills. And um, we were kind of not dipping back to take healing when we should, like living at large on like one or two health points on the front Ooh, line. Yeah. And um, then I see Ben uh, just getting absolutely swarmed by orcs. Is this and a, I'm like, this oh, is no, your first event. This is... this is our first event. <laughs> so um, yeah. <laughs> Ronan, what was my character's name? Ronan? Yeah, um, Ronan. Like big, big, like we said, fantasy magic energy <laughs> char- <laughs> charges the line that um, Percival was on. Jump clean over Percival, who's on one knee, um, and start like laying in with this mm. greatsword. Obviously, immediately taken <laughs> down by the wall of Jotun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking up at like six Jotun just stabbing me with pole arms. Yep. Um, and then I hear behind me, I am unstoppable. And Percival gets up and sprints. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, there's a real sombering moment where one, I was like, oh, it worked. I saved him. I'm the hero. And then I was like, how are they going to save me? And then <laughs> I, I rolled over and I looked at the line that was now 70 feet away. I was and, I, yeah, and I was like, oh. Oh, they're not going to save me. Yeah. And that was a really like sombering moment. It was like, oh, I, it's actually really easy to die in battles. Yeah. Um, but that then led to so much gain for our group. Like, you know, like, because I came back as like, like I committed so many LARP sins. <laughs> <laughs> um, I came back as like, I was playing Ronan Blackrock. I came back as Finton Blackrock, <laughs> you know? And I was like, I think I think you guys were actually there, if I recall correctly. Oh, were you the person so. that came into Wise you were the Guys? The one that came into and Wise yeah, Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were like, "Oh, yeah, this I, like, is my true." This is my. Down on the I table. remember you coming out and being like, "Oh yeah, hi, I'm new to Anvil, and uh, yeah, this is uh, I, I, this is my my brother left me this this stuff." <laughs> I Luckily remember you were telling me. the story. And I was like, "Oh my god, uh, you the guy!" Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it was. And I remember because we got so much game out of it because I like threw the sword down on the table because we had all this glade warden lore. We're like, mm. you never go alone. You always come back, or two of you die, kind of thing. Mm. So I like threw the sword in front of Dylan. And I was like, "What the f- do you call this?" Actually, I said, "What the f- do you call this?" Because I was like, "How am I going to differentiate these characters? I'll do a shitty Northern Ireland accent." <laughs> <laughs> which i dropped immediately um yeah, yeah well, after accents, the fourth yeah. time of people being like what <laughs> yeah, like, i'd be like oh yeah let's head over to navarra maybe we can get a few drinks and you know make our way down to xyz and i just have like ben or someone looking at me like no i'm sorry i've no idea what you've just said to me <laughs> um but yeah no that like that was my first character very very short-lived yeah. Um, I mean that's a cliche, but if you're gonna do that, to, like dying uh, dying early on, yeah. it, it's like it's okay. I think I think that's even true in like TTRPGs. Like I would uh, if I was DMing, I would I couldn't care less if it was like first session and someone comes in with a very similar character. Yeah, who cares? You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> everyone's at, done it. At the end I, of the day, it's a game, right? Yeah. Like we're we're all like even if it's like a TTRPG, it's we're playing a game in the field. And yeah, so, like, yeah. you got to do what's fun and manageable for you. And if that's coming back as your, you know, your brother or your son or whatever, then that's it. <laughs> Although in that instance, it did kind of me because um, the that well, character yeah. was made as a reaction, right? Whereas the original character, I put all this plan and thought into, and then you know. I died. I went to God, and they were like, "It was actually very funny." She's like, <laughs> I do. Out of context, that, that sentence. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> things, you can, things that people who don't lark over here would be. Yeah, right. Say. So I died. I went to. I God. remember we were in the airport <laughs> going said. over, and we were talking about like heresies and stuff, and I realized we were talking about this in the airport lounge, and I was like, "Oh," and I had to go. If anyone is eavesdropping it's a game we're not in a cold game. Oh, man. <laughs> like we, so like before we um ever went to empire we went to we were at mcm comic-con and yeah um they were doing a panel oh, on, on yeah. LARP. And it was made it was it was basically an empire panel because there were all empire players on there um and uh steve uh like hefty yeti was, mm-hmm. was doing like this uh talk right um with, and they're all you know they're all talking about LARP, and he starts he starts going on about um like in in character drugs at empire yeah. but obviously the conversation is going on for quite a while 
and general public are just walking oh, by. Oh, somebody just thing. walks in. In yeah. droves. So at the point, it's just like, oh, yeah, you know what? I like taking Twilight because it does this and does that. And it's like, oh, I've got all the drugs. Like, oh, you know, I sometimes I sell drugs. I'm just like, there's, I'm like, <laughs> what is this? With a microphone. And this is one of the open yeah. bits in MCM That's as so well. Funny. It's not a closed off room. Like, no. this is like right between some of the doors. Yeah, it, it takes. <laughs> that you know, is incredible. Takes Sorry, Jim. Yeah, you went, you went to God. You died and went to God. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 God. What did you say? <laughs> oh, uh, I can't even remember what I said. I remember walking up, uh, but the best bit was like I walked up and like there's just the lady at the computer and she's like, "Oh, died in the battle, didn't we?" And I was like, <laughs> "That's so good. That's such a unique thing somebody can say to you." <laughs> but she was like, "Do you have do you have a new character?" And I was like, "Oh, uh, I had been Ronan. I'm now Finton Blackrock." And she looks at me and goes. Rudder of Ronan is <laughs> but like yes, and yes. she was lovely but I made that character like that in one minute and then for the next six seven events I was playing a character that I hadn't put thought into and didn't really care for mm, you know yeah. so like he ended up doing all this stuff I know like he was leading a lance and he was doing xyz and I was like I don't want to do any of this <laughs> like so he um I just had him kind of I, I I one of the events I just messaged into our kind of lance chat and I was like hey um, Finton's gone hunting slavers in the Commonwealth. Uh, I'm coming back as someone else, and everyone was real chill with it, like you know, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. I came back as um, Caspian, who's like a sailor and like a martial arts monk in Dawn, and all this really fun stuff. And he's just like a normal person, aside from all the you know magic, magic. stuff. But like, <laughs> I'm having so much more fun with him. So whereas, like, long. <laughs> long answer short Dylan is still on his first character and yep. I'm on my third <laughs> Tig still knocking around uh, yeah. found, found myself as the Earl now which is very very different oh, you're than... the Earl yeah <laughs> oh, um, wow. it's uh not sure how I'm feeling about it still like I, I do enjoy it but it's a lot of it's a lot of like OC work and um you know, headspace goes to it a lot of just, you know, being like, oh, I need to like um, look after the house, which I do, I enjoy. Um, but I think if Tyg died, I wouldn't want to be the Earl again. I'm enjoying it as as I'm doing it, but I I don't see myself do, wanting to do it for ages. Yeah. Are you doing all but at the same time, like... I'm also allergic to my character dying. So <laughs> 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 Jim got it out of the way and knows what it feels like to reroll new characters. I, I think don't. that was a blessing. It really was. I, I would say it was, yeah, because yeah. I, it's um, mind you, Jim. I, th I think I think I think dying as a character you're really attached to, I think, is an experience that mm. is worth doing. I don't. Yeah, think, I know some people do plan it. Cause you're like, I've had enough. I had enough with this one, but yeah, like that. Um, what what do they call it? Um, uh, type two fun. Um, was something else. Like literally dying. I I hated it. Yeah. Um, and I actually grieved <laughs> for, for my character. Um, but it was like the highlight of my year this year was dying. You it know? was yeah. Well, yeah. the fact that like so we obviously all did um our collab together before we made the video on yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. that, that was the event, wasn't it? Oh yeah, oh, it was that, that was same event. event. Do you know how hard it was to watch that? Because that was my, obviously the first time we'd ever seen footage of our actual characters. And we were shouting uh, things like Godric. And I was like, oh my God, that's us. And we died that weekend. Yeah. Oh no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> on, on the flip side though, thank you for like immortalizing them in film. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, yeah, silver linings, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. God, yeah, I didn't That's even think nasty. about that. Jesus, yeah. I, I mean, I'm so, I'm sorry. Well, that, yeah, that, was, that was that was a that was such a wild event, yeah. And it, like that, that, that event was, was, yeah, and that's because well, obviously we, we we saw you then. In fact, actually, yeah. So um, for people who haven't seen it, you we did a uh, video with you guys. You you guys did a uh, guide Basically to how com combat works. Guide to combat yeah. on Empire. So mm. we'll, we'll put we'll put the links down. Find the video up there go go check that out what what made you guys because obviously you you said you had like a, a sword fighting channel you have a, a ttr actual play was it just a uh just a done thing that you were going to make content for love oh, yeah or? you asked us asked, asked us this at the start we just yeah. went on tangents oh, no, I'll bring it right around. <laughs> i did warn you I'm, 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 on I'm, tangents. I'm, I'm a professional i'll bring it right around don't worry i'll find some way um, to wrangle you we just thought it would be fun um yeah, yeah. like here's your answer yeah like we never like 
okay, so with Wade Heron, obviously we've done um video content before, but it's always been very, very kind of like moderately in very instructional and kind of straight to the point. And we're like, yeah. okay, this is the sore form. This is how you do it. Here's a demonstration of it. Here's a breakdown of it. Finn, you know, five minutes usually max for video. And yeah, we kind of we did the first couple of um first couple of events and we're like, hey, let's start a YouTube channel. And literally it was just because it was fun. It's something we've never done before, the kind of like the vloggy style yeah, um yeah. content. Something very, very new to us. And we're like, yeah, let's do it. Let's record it in our nature office, which is just Jim's garden. Um and <laughs> like... I love the nature office, by the way. <laughs> I... yeah, so do I. So I can't ever leave it. it. I, like, I, I mean I can't the believe... temptation to do this from the nature office, except it's like minus four outside. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong that with was me? the thing. It's like when we were like getting you guys on, I was like, oh, we need, we will have to sit outside as well because that'd be really cool. And there's like, <laughs> um, there's a swing hanging from a tree out there. And I was like, we could both squash up on the that swing. Would be, that would have been hilarious. Who likes that around been us and just sit there shivering. We'll do, <laughs> we'll do a summer one. version. So it's We'll a... do a summer one where we, yeah. we find nice glades and do it there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you have a you have a beautiful setup there though, and I can't believe it, like it's actually in Ireland because like I said the, the weather is also always amazing when you're filming them, and I'm just like, <laughs> it, like uh, that, we only choose to do it when we, that's why we don't have that many videos. Many videos. And also, Jim <laughs> ref, flat out refuses to do it not in the nature office, so our recording window is very slim. <laughs> <laughs> a man of principle, <laughs> yeah. no, no, of all the things to be principled principled about. <laughs> no, there, there it's is... also a nightmare because you've always got like. <laughs> wind on your mics and shit like oh it's, it's, it's the setup so constrict audio yeah. setup takes a while <laughs> it, was, it was so funny it was like because it's funny i watched the i can't remember which one it was it wasn't was obviously wasn't the one that um uh you did with us but it was it was, it was one of them that we that we watched and uh robin i think robin had said to a couple of you i was just like it, it was a really good video but you had you had the tr the tree branch and you're well, like I, you're, it's you're, this camera here yeah your your camera quality like i'm obviously like I'm, I'm jealous of your camera quality and all that but i was just like it was just, just like the branch is just the, the office is just the star of the show because yeah. it's just like your camera is just like look at this branch here look at this rock over here these trees beautiful <laughs> it's <laughs> just love it it's the love worst it. i'm like i'm a i'm a videographer by trade like yeah. <laughs> and the problem with fake swords is we take a very haphazard approach to yeah. prepping it like oftentimes it's, it's good, we don't know though. what the video yeah. is about yeah right? yeah <laughs> you don't know what the video is. It's, it's good though it comes across uh one of one of the one of the videos <laughs> that i and the compliment to maybe just snatch a compliment from the jaws of that <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe uh one of the videos i watched from from you guys was the um I think this way, it might have been your first one. You were talking about, mm. and I thought I was the only one who thought this. And you were talking about like LARP um, terminology, mm. and you were talking about like the term froth for. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, you guys were like, doesn't it sound, it sounds weird, doesn't it? And everyone, as soon as I got into LARP community, everyone's like, oh, yeah, we're frothing, we're frothing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, what? It's like, it's like the word <laughs> moist, isn't it? You're just like, yeah, it just. <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't sit right. It's too wet and chunky a word. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. It's um, um what yeah, was the I'm word? Not, you... I'm not oat milk. Don't don't frost me like <laughs> 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 But I was like, if you're getting some... so excited, you're I mean I guess that's where it's coming because you're getting so excited you're frothing like, at the mouth. Frothing at the maybe? mouth. Because yeah. oh, it's like your man in Avatar, right? When he when he sees um Ang and he's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like Oh, oh, the LARP people, yeah, they all have rabies, but, you know? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've never been like... confident enough to question it because I came in and everyone was just using the term and I was just like, yeah. oh, okay, maybe it's me. That's... That, that is the imagery that comes to mind. It's like yeah. some sort of weird rabies, um, zombie, like, yeah, it... I, I don't know. That's what comes to mind. Yeah, I think we, we use the like delicate it. phrase, like, <laughs> historical discourse of recent events or something yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... God, our channel is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's great it's a great channel go go watch go watch every go watch every video we, we do have I, I say some we've got two now videos that are somewhat actually thought out and informative obviously no. the one that you guys uh graciously helped us out with and then our 10 things but even with our 10 things that you should know about empire you know most cliche youtuber style video in the world um 
Jim didn't know anything about it. I did all the research for that. And I was like, hey, Jim, this is the video we're going to do. And he's like, what? <laughs> you literally in the video. You're yeah, like, yeah. okay, so I'm like, what are we doing today? And you just slide the laptop over. I'm like, yeah. okay, that, it is, I'm not reading what, that. It's a difficult topic because like, like mm. you know, we, we we have one that same kind of vein. It's like, oh yeah, a guide. And some, like we'll go through it and we'll be like, oh, we need to add that, add that. No, that's actually important. That's actually important. Then we did the whole mm. video and I'm like, crap, we didn't even mention... X, Y, it's and such Z. a dense topic. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. I'm like, we didn't even like, give like, healing any, any love or anything, yeah. you know? Jim, you Jim, close your ears for a second. Uh, you can't be, um, thank you. We're going to do a, <laughs> we're going to do like, I'm planning out a series that's going to yeah. be more of a kind of comprehensive run through. Like, okay, here's actually what a LARP is. Why does a LARP look like here? Okay, here's what Empire looks like. Here's what yeah. character creation. And kind of just mm. do, do a little more kind of gradual, maybe do like, three four videos on it but um yeah okay yeah. <laughs> put it back on yeah it's you fine. can Still, put it back on the... yeah <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah like then when jim did oh you're back hello yeah sorry yeah <laughs> i heard everything i did i'm living in mystery <laughs> thing is i think because because we're all content as well i like having other content creators on because we, like we, we all know we all know that we're we're, we're learning just enough i guess this guess this well, robin robin's into education i guess this is what it must be like being educated you just you don't need to know everything you just need to know enough just to get just to say the content <laughs> you know you don't need to know everything about empire but you just need to be able to sit in front of a camera and just read it that's second to be like oh and by the way this is how everything works <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. please don't tell my students that i just like google how to do something 10 minutes before the lesson. Uh, Confirm. Yeah, that sounds fine. that is how that is how teaching works i've had teachers that definitely don't know what they're talking about so yeah yeah i, well, yeah, I think it's part of it well, I, I it would... was when we did the rules video though like when we were doing the um i think we all learned the rules. oliver and i were like <laughs> I, I was like yeah yeah let's do it and we got the kit and went over there and we kind of all stopped went I hope someone's got the rules on their yeah, phone. I, I, I can't yeah. remember that, any of them. I think I learned all the combat rules when we were filming. How did you I mean, combat like, we fun? probably made a few of them up there. Like, they, oh, they might yeah. not be accurate. You know? <laughs> oh, I take a hit point when that happens? What? Yeah. Let's edit that out. <laughs> did, yeah, you were like, you, you didn't realize that when you got when you got cleaved, you took a hit point? And I'm like, Robin, you should be I thought dead. I the leg was enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we dead so many times. I, oh. My my character also should be dead from again basic beginner mistakes where I either didn't know the rules or I was just so caught up in everything going on that I forgot them. I think it was like in like the second battle or something, I got cleaved, um, but I had a use of it. I got cleaved, which also dropped me down you to zero. Unstoppable, wasn't it? And I had an uns I was given an unstoppable tonic, so I was like, ah, "Brand, yeah. I'm unstoppable." And I got up and ran away. And then about like thirty minutes later, I was like my leg doesn't work technically, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's like, but stuff like that happens all the time. It does, because and... it especially mm. if it's a misunderstanding, I mean, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do, you know? It's a tr thing is, it's trust-based, it's not cheating unless you're actually knowingly doing it in a trust-based system. Yeah, I, yeah, I exactly. think there's a big difference between that and being like, oh, you, yeah. like, you know, fudging your health points yeah. when you should yeah, go yeah, down yeah. and stuff. Because it goes the other way. I can, yeah. I can't cheat. And like yeah. when it came to, and then there was one of the fights where I I was kind of coming off, and in my head I had five hero points, and really I only had four hero points or something yeah. stupid like that. And I came off, and I was like, I felt so bad about it that I just like tore up one of my scops meads, and I was like, I'll just get rid of that, you know. There's, I'll yeah. just get rid of that, you know. Then I... maybe, maybe that'll balance out. And I felt so bad about potentially using an extra hero point. I've done that as well. I think specifically kind of from that I, i've been very much trying to be focused on like okay i need to make sure i'm fully fully on top of things but then even things like ha that'll happen where you're like you know like okay i'll drink um a potion and i'm like cool and then you look at after potions after i'm like oh have i ripped enough of these cards yeah, like did that. i rip it yeah. that time yeah and then i'm just gonna like you know, i'll just rip it now because i'd rather you know just to be safe but uh yeah like so much is going through your mind that like it's so easy to miscount like how many times did i actually call yeah. cleave there or how many times yeah, i found that with like crystal mana because like in the middle of a fight you're not going to be like yeah. repel you know so I, i'm yeah. trying to keep uh, track in my head and yeah. then afterwards i'll be like Fuck. so i always err on ripping more like you know oh yeah, i was just gonna, gonna ask you that about mana because i know for me for potions like what going on for robin just said like mm. if i have my gloves on and i've got this 
pouch with the little freaking stupid buckle yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. As if I'm going to yeah. stop in the middle of like deadly combat. Go, Hang on, just let me get this. Because like, right, yeah. I've got the fizz rep and I just use the fizz rep. That's, that's, that's it, exactly what I do. I've fighting. got one around my neck so I can just be like, whoop. Done, yeah. you know. I have a little crystal that Cass takes out and kind of does like a little uh, video game. <laughs> you know? I, love it. <laughs> I love it. The thing is, it, but it works both ways because I think I went through my like two entire events and hmm. I think I fought like in the glory square a couple of times just with my gambeson on and yeah. I did not know there was rules for light armor. Uh, so I actually had like an extra hit yeah, point two and hit i was working off yeah i was mm. working off like two hit points or whatever so i was going down when i shouldn't have been going down but you know it's, yeah again yeah. yeah it's a game yeah. you know like you're not always gonna get all the rules of the game right yeah. the first yeah. time you do it or even the no. fifth time or sixth time it's keeping track of hit points i really struggle with that sometimes when i'm like okay i know how many i've got but it's when you get hit by a couple of people at once and you're like the, the, the two people hit me like at the same time that wasn't like one second between them is that two yeah is that one and the amount of numbers that's going through your head you're just like oh okay yeah i think i just need to step away and take a potion <laughs> in that regard a real battle is easier because when your hit points are up you just die whereas this one <laughs> you have to remember you're trying to do like, quick math while point. you're fighting people well, like, you yeah. know i guess that's the weird thing about the, the pool system as well like the, the health pool like D&D, mm -hmm. like how it's just like a dragon can be killed by like a, 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 a familiar or something like that. There's one hit point. It's kind of stupid. Like this, it's like, oh, I have these huge, great big pauldrons and someone yeah. like taps me on the side of that pauldron and I'm dead apparently. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like the oh, way oh. the way we always look at hit points. And I love this. It, it's kind of how they do it in the Uncharted games, the game designer said. But we look at them as your luck. And it's not that you're getting loads of little cuts and stuff, but it's like when your last hit point is down, your luck has run out and they finally nick your jugular or something, yeah. you know? Uh, and it's like a real nice way of being like, this is how I'm quantifying this. And at least that's how I do it in my head, you know? Because yeah. I don't want to be like, oh, you know, a bee stung me. That's one hit point. Yeah, because I, <laughs> I hate that. It's like, so, yeah. like, not going about, like, D&D, &D, but I, that's why I like, to, I like to count up if I'm DMing. Mm -hmm for hit points because then i can then i and then i have a range because i hate the fact if like i know someone does one damage to my big monster that that's going to kill it <laughs> I, remember yeah, yeah. Like, I remember when someone does something really cool and they get into that range of damage and i go yes that's the the barbarian jumping from a high height is going to kill it not 100 yeah. percent. yeah <laughs> not someone yeah. flicking a pebble at it is going Mo is going to kill it that's how i generally run things as well with mm. the exception of if i know someone has just done a big hit I'll often tell them, okay, the opponent has, you know, X amount of health left. So in case they want to use any abilities, items, kind of anything like that to try and like re-maximize their damage, try and get that gameplay in. And then it's like, okay, here's your target. And then if they don't beat it and it has one health point left, well then I've already said what it is. So it's out in the open. Mm -hmm. But otherwise I fully am with that mindset of like, okay, they've done enough damage to get them to the danger zone, so a next good hit is going to be the one that does yeah. it. Isn't it, isn't it weird, though, because like, it's, it, cause it's, it's there's such a big player base, you don't have a game master. You've got refs, yeah. but you don't have a game yeah. master. So there's kind of, it's not the same... There's not really a rule of cool, but there kind of is an empire. Do you guys find that? Because it's like... When monstering, 100%, mm. yeah. I follow the rule of cool. Like, I feed kills as a monster yeah. you know like if i have like five hits left as a monster and somebody comes out and like pulls off a perfect repose and hits me like i'm giving them my like oh yeah and falling you know like especially if i'm hungover yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, i love that though i love doing those like sort of deaths that makes them feel because they're the heroes right like and making yeah. them feel yeah. like oh my gosh i did that and be able to tell those stories and everything and also i'm usually hangover um <laughs> <laughs> But on yeah. the other side of that coin, my absolute favorite thing to do in Empire, hands down, is when an Imperial is dying, to give them oh. the trash talking of the century. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a tradition that again comes from, um, that was passed on to me by the Jotun that killed Ronan. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was sitting over me and gave me a really cool death. Now granted, he was kind of Jotun about it. And he was like... Yeah. Do you have any last... Or, you know, he offered me the choice yeah. first. He was like, you know, you can put down your sword and like how Slade Warden is all about swords. So I was like, no, not going to do that. And then he was like, what are your last words? And then I didn't have anything planned. So I was like, I, I die for House Glade Warden. He's like, 
well, at least you die for something. And he goes, and I took two of you with me. And then he laughed or whatever, you know. But since then, some of the best role play moments have been like march your bullshit on the other side, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah. <laughs> I remember I saw Percival. March your bullshit will never die, PD. If you're watching this, bring back march your bullshit. Yeah, full time. <laughs> you, you created a monster. You can't yeah. just you can't just forget about it. The bullshit's yeah. in the cage here. Okay. <laughs> but I remember, like, there was a time we were monstering, and one Imperial got lost behind the lines, and I could see them. Or they were sitting there in the ditch, and nobody was paying any attention to them, and they were obviously counting down, right? So a group of us went over, and we were like, you know, started giving them as marchers, but like then they were loving it, and they were like feeding it back, and they were like, we were like, oh, are you are you dying? And he was like, I don't want your heels. Oh, no, <laughs> wouldn't heal you. No, nothing like that. And then we start like trash talking him. And he's like, go on then, tell us what you died for. And he was like, I die for, because he's a winter marker, obviously. How stunning. Um, <laughs> they die for it. They die for it. No. <laughs> but we were like, he was in the ditch. And we were like, um, we were like, all right, yeah, 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 X, Y, Z. What are we going to do with this one? I was just going to throw him in the hole like everyone else isn't we as he was slipping away into the labyrinth um we made a big point of being like did he say house dung was it uh that's and that was the funny punchline to my story you heard half of. I'll, 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 um, I'll, I'll edit it back in it was it will sound great after editing honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> the timing will be anyway perfect. if that person is watching thank you you made my monstering mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah you you got to be um yeah you, you you've got to get the vibe that, that's the thing as well a lot of these people you don't know but you've got to get the vibe of what the person is feeling because there's yeah there has been times where like I, like we've been fighting and i think it was was it one this year it could have been the end of last year and we had like mm. a new a brand new player um in our lance uh or the lance i was i was fighting with um and it was that one where the 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 druge were just like rolling over the top we we almost had like a tdk in in our in our lance there um and one of the i don't think there was that many deaths that time it wasn't the bad dawn one i think it was it might be e3 Last, yeah. last year it was harrowing but you got yeah, out of it, it kind was, of it thing was, yeah. it was harrowing and and one of our players kind of but you could tell she was oc like quite uncomfortable you know mm. and the luckily the the monsters like completely picked up on that even though it's like it goes against the the druge brief they just kind of threw her back they were just like this person got yeah. rolled over and then she was like oh no i don't like i'm literally out of character in the woods on my own all these people around yeah. me with masks and they just went right just 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 go back and then there's that there's people that have like are, are relishing in the death and being like oh yeah you know cool g- give it to me and then there's people yeah. like us that are like oh crap this has happened uh and obviously we were a little bit shocked that it was happening in the moment and you're just like oh crap a bit like you jim when your first thing being like there's that moment where you go oh we're fucked like oh like yeah there's, there's no matter no way how out of this. loud i shouted zoran he just didn't come back yeah dawn anyone could have come <laughs> I'm sure our voice travelled to the oh, other no. field. Everyone has an excuse why they didn't come. But anyway, with all that matters is you didn't come. <laughs> but anyway, like so we, we were like, oh, it's over. But then it was it was luckily the, the, the Yotan around has picked up on the fact that we were like, we have made the decision. Cause I mean, cause let's face it, like if we had I, I feel like I could have metagamed our way out of that. Like, th- like with the it, Jotun, I think it's yeah. We, we, we could we yeah. could have met a game. It um, it turns out well, I didn't know at the time. It turns out we knew a couple of Jotun that were actually standing over us yeah. anyway. Like you know, I, I could have been like, oh yeah, you know, we'll if you let me and my love fight, we'll come and fight you another day and we'll prove ourselves. I could I could have come up with something law wise. Yeah, let us um, come back stronger so you earn it or whatever. And, you know? and I could have played it to try and make the other players know that I wasn't happy being killed and blah blah blah. Whatever. Um, we could have done that, but we we that they picked up on the fact we met that we had made the decision that oh yeah this is our moment to yeah do our amazing role play of our deaths now you know because mm. they're not going to have another chance um and yeah we're we're, we're so because that's the thing people get a bit funny about like killing players but we're so happy i think that the, the, yeah. the Jotun behaved the way they did because they totally played into it you know they stood around us in a circle and you know they were that you know they, they they dragged me over to over to arenel and we we got to have that moment that was completely on the monster i know they killed us but that yeah. was complete that yeah. whole role play was completely on 
the monster side, even though they yeah they mm. killed us, but they didn't have to do that. But they understood yeah, yeah. the poignancy of the moment, like exactly. Yeah. You know, like like you said, it's a game, right? So it's mm. yes, it, that's that's I... a rule of cool as well. That's so good because, like, I firmly believe that a story is only as good as its ending. So, like, if you have a really good story, and then fifteen years after it, that's not as good as that really good story just flashing out when it's meant to, when it's the most poignant. You know, I yeah. Like, and from what I when I was listening to you guys' episode on your deaths, I was like completely enthralled, and I was like, <laughs> "This is so good! Like, this is such a narratively cool end for these characters." Yes, it's sad the characters die. But like, it's a story people will remember. Oh know? yeah, yeah. That's, and that's... that's so much better than the story that fades out. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like the <coughs> role play from from yeah. from everything there. Like, um, the way that all the people monstering there were both in character and out of character. Because then, like, out of character, they were kind of like, right, okay, how do you guys want to do this and everything? Should we get mm. you all like? bloody dirt and carry you back and stuff and we did this whole thing because i was a little bit like i don't what do i do i've got no idea i'm I well, so, going like, back to rules I, I yeah like, you were yeah, like because... i was like i don't know what the rules are what do mm. i do and like literally the players there explained things and we, we figured it all out and took that time and caught our breath and then went from it from that point onwards yeah it was hot yeah, yeah. <laughs> i that's one of the biggest things kind of just jump on what you're saying there robin of like you know, we're saying like there's no game master, so it's it's all about the players to make the the story themselves, and that's only something that's recently clicked for me in Empire is that whole kind of like no, just go and make your own story, and like even if it's not like the rules don't necessarily always come into it. Okay, in your situation, they kind of do because there's kind of hard and fast rules about you know dying and stuff like that. But I mean, it's like you know. The whole thing with LARP is, you know, if if you want to do it, you got to do it, you know? And I think I was so used to coming from a like a D&D and TTRPG background of like, well, you know, the GM will tell you what to do and you respond to that. And it's like, no, you really got to go out there and make things happen yourself. And it's like, okay, how do I want this to work? And even just kind of little collabs with, you know, your play group or whoever around you to be like, hey, like after Jim's character died, I was like, okay, part of my test of metal is going to be, I'm going to tell a story about his death and stuff like that. And kind of like, you know, um, you know, uh, in memorialize him, memorialize him and stuff like that. So it's like, okay, I'm going to tell my friends like, Hey, be here at 10 o'clock because there's going to be an impromptu. This is going to be when we all gather to do this. And it's like, you know, until you get comfortable doing that kind of thing, I think your game isn't as good. And then when you realize like, hey, you know what? I'm going to be the main character in my own story here for a while and really make something cool happen, then it's all great. I think that's when the fun happens. Yeah, I love when Dylan goes and gets himself story because it always turns out incredible. Like <laughs> the last event we went to, Dylan was like, I'm going to do something big. And then like went out and uh, you can tell the story, but like the whole thing with the Deadwood Knight. Oh, well, Deadwood Knight was Ooh, unreal. <clears throat> yeah so there was like a, a skirmish that was up for the um the schlachter of rot or the deadwood knight it was like a joint dawn of rushka skirmish yes and it just like oh. it was like it was at e3 last year and i was like this sounds really really cool it was you know i kind of it was my second event as earl and i was still as i said i was still kind of finding my feet so i was like i want to just give myself something very kind of like you know simple to do i'd be like just have let's have one task for the weekend and let's do it and i end up just like evolving more and more and like there's more game out of it i was like okay going searching around getting my sword um anointed or whatever the religious you know version thing is yeah uh -huh. um like hallowed or something yeah ha yeah hallowed, yeah yeah um you know, got that, got myself enchanted, things are, I've um, got a ritual cast on me, all, you know, was searching at all this stuff and then, you know, interacting with loads of other people in Dawn. Um, and it's just like so much stuff came out of it. And then, yeah, the actual battle itself was also unreal. One of the coolest skirmishes, well, the coolest skirmish I've ever been on. Who, but who yeah. Are you, who are you fighting? The Deadwood Knight. So it's like this old story of like this, um, not quite a sovereign um but like the servant of a sovereign who comes and basically issues a test of arms to champions of dawn and verushka and if the ch if the challenge is not met then basically so the last time um lit. it wasn't met uh and a 
they, they it raised so many husks, basically raised an army of husks so big that an imperial army had to be sent in to it take wiped care out of it. the weirwood. That's, right? that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. what you're talking about is is yeah, like it's it's tied to our house because we're 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 water house and we're all like we we're not the biggest fan of of undeaf and things like that because yeah. we, we think death is is important that it's final so we don't like that type. yeah but like mm. as characters in we that we would have been affected by that so i know about and that. so our house is in war water as well and obviously mm. i was like uh this guy's in a forest and he's being evil and my house is about protecting forests i am there oh. you know yeah. um so yeah it was myself and a champion from varushka mm -hmm. basically teamed up um, and there's all just all this like, you know, back and forth and prepping for it. We were, weren't sure because we were able to bring it was a 20 person skirmish. Mm, but, yeah. Oh. And but then we were like, mm. oh, you know, we thought it was going to be a case of like, oh, they're going to make the champions fight each other. So I was there like gearing up to have, you know, have loads of people in my corner that could like heal me, mend my weapons if they brought yeah. someone who could like shatter things or something like that. All of this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, we didn't know how it was going to go then it was it turns out that it was like okay no it was um the deadwood knight itself issued a challenge we ended up wrangling it that it would fight both of us going back to what oh, this is very poetic going back to what we were saying at the start about you know 2v1 i was so yeah. obviously me and your man looked at each other we're like obviously yeah. we'll do two on one <laughs> yeah with the stakes being that if you beat us then um the curse would go up on both Don and Verushka, so it was actually really high stakes and kind of brash of us to do this. Um, That's gross. Dawn is you did it. Yeah, but I was like, oh, yeah. have have to do it. Mm. Um, and then yeah, it turned out to be this like multi stage boss fight where the rest of our people, some of who were essentially or were like Long low guns. calm mm. um, people who we brought for like research purposes, people who wanted to maybe like end um, yeah, this curse yeah, yeah. and things, they end up getting attacked by. Um, husks and so they had to constantly put them down but they wouldn't go down until we had beaten the the knight and he had a three stage fight um where basically he got stronger and stronger each stage so he would like go down and then he would basically just like kind of like like rejoin himself and stand yeah, back up bar. <laughs> basically you help bar the opera gets the more intense <laughs> um and like the way to to put an icy spin on it like it's basically the like the his like bark barky skin was getting like harder and harder because at first i could cleave him but then i couldn't as if he was wearing medium armor and then uh, again and then uh he was wearing heavy armor and so like he got stronger and stronger each time and so the fight went on longer and longer each time all while behind us there's the ads and our people fighting it was so cool it was like, a I'm, I'm just picturing Cell, raid, like, like or I, I'm just picturing, like, you know, this isn't even my final form. <laughs> 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 yeah. Fighting Frieza, just like. <laughs> Incredible. It, yeah. Um, I got, yeah, some very cool then main character moments <laughs> um, where I was like, I put him on the ground. I was so basically just like started like circling him around, being like, I'm the Earl of House Glade Warden. I, you know, vowed my life and service to protect anything who would you know attack these woods how dare you come in do you yield like have we not passed your chest your test yet and he just stood up and i was like i have to put him down again <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah um I, yeah I, I, fun I, time so yeah i i love stories like that i mean this is the thing like when you hear about larp everyone's got a completely different story i think i think that's mm. um I, I, I often say that to people that like if if you're coming to like empire and 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 i'm assuming it's the same for other laps and you hear stories like oh like you're not you're going to be disappointed if you don't have if you think you're going to get the same kind of experience yeah. you're mm. going to have your own experience yeah but yeah like as i said that was a 20 person 20 people experienced that and the the you know the monstering team but like how many people are on the field like you know one percent of the field experienced yeah. that one thing which yeah. is like my biggest highlight of my larping yeah you know life yeah do you think that's and... why people get a little bit kind of intimidated by the thought of of, of empire because going back to like what you said Dylan, there's no um there's no there's no gm to like set out and i know there are larps like this where it's just like oh yeah some a quest giver will come up to you and be like hey you know go rescue these people and go slay that monster there's the monster mm -hmm. over there go kill it here's how the rules work <laughs> But at Empire, there's like, 
you know, if you if you just sit statically, which some people enjoy doing that, obviously, but yeah. like literally, you could show up for the weekend, get a, a deck chair out, just sit. You could an just empire sit there. will go by. Yeah, yeah. empire yeah. will just happen, and, and no one's going to come up to you and be like, "Oh, hey, you know, do you want to?" You know, you, you've got to do this thing because you paid your ticket. You've got to come and, and watch this thing. You, you're perfectly at liberty to just sit and do nothing. But it also means that if people are a little bit like, oh, I, oh, I don't know, you know, what what do you think the mm. best? Because you mentioned like talking about uh, talking to, to groups. Do you think groups are like the answer for people? Because like? we do get questions like, like, oh, I'm anxious about coming. What do you suggest? And sometimes I'm like, I, I don't know what to say. I think groups are 100% the best way to do that. Like we were two lost little dogs on our first one and then we found some friends and suddenly it was a group and we had a group goal and stuff and everybody had a role in the group, you know? But like there'd be times even now where like, you know, I've finished everything I'm meant to do and I'm like, I have nothing to do here. I'd go for a walk and then something would come of somebody from our Lance or some Donish person coming up and being like, this is happening. Let's go. And that throws you back into it. But if you don't have a group, you know, you might find yourself at a bit of a loss in those situations, yeah, you know? Yeah. I think it'd be, it can be though, be quite intimidating to force yourself on a group, particularly if mm. you want to try and do that, you know, prior to going to an event. So I think to, to those questions that people might have, the egregores, it wasn't until I yeah. did the, the Deadwood Night thing that I really actually ever interacted with an Egregore. And then I was like, oh, these people are here to help you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's like, you could very feasibly go to them, even in character, and be like, hi, I like this. What's going on in the world that I can get involved in? And your Egregore will be like, yeah, come do this. There's this thing going on. Because they know all the plots and all the skirmishes and things going on. So like, even if you didn't want to do that, like the, the Egregores are quasi they're not gms at all really because they're they're their own characters and they have their own things that they're doing but they are a good resource to you know take advantage of um that i mm. we definitely didn't you know interact with nearly enough at the start i think it would have been a very very different game had we you know yeah even known about them enough to kind of approach them really you know we we I, I guess it just depends on the type of person you are. I got a bit my first character. I I kind of knew I wanted to do the test of metal, and that was a test of metal, and that was it. You know, yep. I did get like with with my first character, Godric. I I got to a point where I was a bit lost as to what I wanted to do. That was more to do with the character, though, because I feel like mm. it wasn't that I don't. Oh, I don't. I want to get into religion, but I don't know how. It was just like, oh, this character. I don't feel like he wants to do that. But I think that's I yeah. think that's pretty solid advice to be like, right, okay, figure out what you want to do and tell someone about it, you know? Yeah. And and just say, "Hey, I want this and someone will pick up on that." Cuz I know other people that I know people do go in and they go they get swept up in things. Some people like that, like Jim was saying, that they like someone will come up to you and be like, "Hey, there's a skirmish going on." Or, "Oh, hey, you know, have you voted for this?" and blah, blah, blah. and you if you're that type of person, you go, "Oh, I'll get swept up in this. That's fine." But I have seen people in that field that are quite clearly been swept up in something and they're like, I hate this. You know, some people with hats mm, yeah. actually have literally said to me out of character, I'm not having a good time. You know? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But I mean, that's what happened. My second character is I got swept into like Lance commanding and, and all that kind of stuff, the arrow stuff. And I was like, I have no interest in this. And it was killing my enjoyment of the game where I'm just like, this is not what I want to be doing. I want to be off having adventures and doing quests. So like Dylan said, and like you said, Oliver, I think being able to state what you want is so important for yeah. that. To be like, I want to go and do magic, or I want to be a politician, you know, and somebody will pick up on that and be like, come with me, I'm going to the senator. Come with me, I'm, and, and I'm I think sparkling it's over here. Okay, as well, to not know what you want um, for the first couple of um, sessions or mm -hmm. events, you know, because it's, yeah, it, it's a, a big world out there. So, um, it's but then again going back to like having a group helps because then you can just say to your group like hey just involve me in a few different things and you can kind of get a feel for what you do and do like and you can be like oh yeah i want more of this less of this um don't want that at all kind of thing yeah. you know yeah have mm. a little little tasting menu yeah. for uh yeah for larp yeah you, you guys said you were going to do some videos on on just larp in general are you thinking about doing any other LARP? or ha actually have you done any, any other laps apart from empire yet 
Uh, no, no, we haven't. No, um, there is a LARP in Ireland um, called Five Oaths, um, which is obviously a much smaller one. There's not many that kind of match the the scale of Empire. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it's, you know, it's local enough, it's in, I think they hold, host it in Northern Ireland. Um, mm-hmm. So it is still a bit of a travel for us yeah. um, to get there. But it, one I'd like to go up to, because I think it's a lot more combat focused as well. And it yeah. is a little bit more of the here's the quest go do the yeah. thing um yeah be, because because or there's only i think it's maybe like a 60 70 player larp something like that right, yeah. um so it is like very very small mm-hmm. or well like sm- like relatively yeah. small so relatively to empire like yeah, yeah so I, it will be something i'd like to go um and do but to be honest like we like obviously being from ireland traveling to empire is a, a much bigger investment and yeah you know yeah. time sync you know and like money sync because you know we also have to spend you know a couple hundred euro each event just to get to the event Together. you yeah. know these car rentals planes petrol all that kind of nonsense you know so that kind of like for now i think i'm very happy kind of just sticking with empire and kind of mm. you know because we also do like conventions and appearances and like live shows and stuff like that for um mm. the ttrpg side of things so like our time is somewhat limited and at least we know what we're getting in this and we 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 like it and enjoy it so we're like yeah oh, you, you know you yeah. enjoy you know it's going to be a good weekend and everything and it's like exactly yeah that, that and then we cost. we've made friends over there now as well with it so it's like it's all as part of it's an excuse to be going and meet them and see how they're getting on that's kind of like a nice social event uh, too yeah as well so yeah that said no. I think Empire has ruined smaller things for me, like because I love the yeah. scale of it. You know, it's like what? Oh, it's not a living, breathing city. No, I don't want it. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's <laughs> but... the one thing we're worried about is that. Well, I've I've said this so many times over the past year because people have been asking us, "Oh, you're going to try this one, try that one," and yeah, I do want to try a lot of other stuff, but I'm like worried now. I'm like, do I level up or do I love Empire? Do I love? <laughs> I've had the exact same <laughs> thought. It's like, yeah. do I? I love the experience I've had in Empire, but I think if like if you put me in like a a twelve person LARP, I'd be like less invested. I'd be like, this is fun, but I don't love it the way I love Empire. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well you never know unless you try it, Jim. Well, I, I'm completely open to it. Hey, I mean the yeah. thing is you, you can well actually is there is there any player events over in Ireland? Is there enough of you coming over to We're actually thinking about doing a Glade Ward one at some totally point do down one. the line. Yeah. yeah. Where it's just like, you know, oh come and we'll all sword fight and have a tournament and yeah. some Irish mm. or something. Awesome. Again though, it's the it's a travel aspect that people would have to be yeah. really committed to do. Mm. Um particularly if you're bringing over armor and stuff getting armor over on the plane takes a lot of your easy (laughs) it takes a lot of your baggage how how do you get around it do you do you just like do you fly all do you fly every time or have you like so ferried it over we ferried it over once because we bought uh, an icy tent and now we're very lucky that the rest of our gaming group we've all chipped in and bought a storage unit so we leave a lot of our stuff over there Mm. um and they they're very very good they will go and basically go to storage unit for us bring all of our stuff along with theirs set up our tent by the time we arrive there sometimes and then there's another uh, crowd from ireland um that also travel over and one of them usually gets like either a van or brings a trailer or something so yeah if there's other bits that we need brought over um such as like our weapons because we like to train at home yeah. and bring like them guitars or you know, extra backpacks, that kind of there. thing. Yeah. We can throw it in with them. Yeah. But it's a, uh, yeah, mm. it's, it's an ordeal. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's like the one thing that's put me off actively going to try other LARPs as well. Like there's, there's a few that I'd be like, oh, I'd love to try that. But I'm like, oh, the effort of doing that a fifth that's time so... in a year. Like, you know, especially if yeah. they're like, like, especially, small, yeah. well, especially, I mean, if they're small, um, even the big ones for us, uh, we've got friends that are, are really into the Curious Pastimes game. Yeah. Um, there's obviously Luring Trust. People go, oh, try this game. But I'm just like, it's like, I, I know there are reasons now that people are trying other TTRPGs other than mm-hmm. uh, mm. D&D. But it would it would actually have to be a reason like that for me to, to be like, right, I think, I'm yeah. going to commit to another one. Because it's just like, okay, well why would i want to spend as much time as i do an empire as much money as i do an empire to do something that's slightly similar to empire i mean like really yeah, i yeah. think i would if i was going to put that much money into something else i'd rather just put that money into um 
update in my kit and yeah. buy more armor for yeah. my existing yeah. character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then there's the time investment of learning another system, learning another world, all mm. that kind of yeah. like yeah. um mental labor that goes with that. Yeah. So yeah. So for us, I'm I'm just like when when people ask, I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I would love to. But, but I mean, if if like Curious Pastimes um contacted me, it was just like. Oh yeah, here's here's a ticket coming to our thing, Curious Pastimes, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> then, then, yeah, I'd probably I'd probably go, I'd probably go. But f- for me, it's oh, just 100%. like, what, why? Yeah. It, like, I'm already doing a fast lap. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something. Like you said, it's just just you know adult adult problems, right? Mm-hmm. That you know you've, you've you've only got so many weekends in a year. I have other, it, I have yeah. other interests, I have family and things like that. So if I'm going to try something else, it's going to be something completely different. I'm more interested in like going trying smaller lap, trying one shot laps, trying you know trying some of these other things, or even to be honest, if if someone says right, you know, if you wanted to go to a lap, what's your ideal lap you'd want to try? It would probably be like a private lap with my yeah. with my friends and be like, hey, you know, we, we all know how to role play we've got especially when like I've, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have friends that are, are decent um rpg like writers and things like that i'm sure like or, or we could just buy one and be like hey let's go try that i'm more likely to do that yeah. than i am to be like oh let's go to for laurie and trust events just because you know mm. so. for sure mm. i think i'd like i'd like to take like a, a larp holiday at some point and go to like bickeline for a week or something you know oh yeah do that <laughs> that would be yeah. incredible i'd love that because yeah, I, I, I dylan's sick of me talking yeah. about it. i just i really want to go to bickley you know, it looks great i would like to go to bickley because it's it's very it, again it's very different but yeah i mm. i think i've talked about bickley from like a content created like i would like to do it as a content creation like very holiday. much so of like Very it seems so. like an experience because lots of people make content on Bickley because it is like a whole like you can do a whole holiday vlog yeah because there's like yeah. people that literally um act as travel agents for people coming yeah there's the Bickley. like the voyage north and stuff right yeah. Yeah. that's crazy yeah. wild I tell you what, that's a plan. There's a plan. At some point, four of it. us. We'll get, yeah, we'll get yeah, a load yeah. of us. That's it. We'll get a load, of, load of, load of, uh, <laughs> a, a load of, um, a load of larpers, uh, content creators, and we'll all, we'll all go, and film our experience. Because, because that, that's the other thing about, it. yeah, that, that's a good point actually. Before we, before we wrap up, I want to ask you because I know every other content creator, we, we love Empire, but do you ever get frustrated that you can't freaking film anything <laughs> at Empire? I mean, I do and I don't. Like, the immersion is so good. I, I, I am happy that it's that way. But at the same time, like, how many times still have we gone over with a plan to be like, we're going to, like, we've had a great plan. We wanted to do a walking tour of Anvil for people who've never been there. But, like, time out, we don't have the time. Time in, you can't do it, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, because, yeah, yeah it, it's a it's a double-edged sword because at the same time, I, yeah, I'd love to be able to, like, do you know, some like cheeky behind this kind of behind the scenes, you know, um, like hidden camera footage style of, of, you know, things that are going on. But at the same time, I, I don't want that to exist in the world. Exactly. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think it's, um, it's, it's tough. And then even cause I remember, I can't remember the name of them, Jim, but the video you sent me on that, like wasteland weekend LARP. Oh, I can't remember the name of the YouTube. It was very good though. But it was, it was very, incredible. Yeah. It seemed like very, very good. But I, I was watching and I couldn't help. And the, they, they were filming in time in. And I just couldn't help but think, isn't that really weird for all the other players to... I think in that situation, this... right? But the, that situation, it's a post-apocalyptic LARP with modern technology. So people would have cameras and stuff. Yeah. Whereas yeah. It, it, with Empire, it, I feel like if I was... It's still, you're it, very, it's still away very from... obviously content being filmed though yeah at the same yeah. time for some of it you know so it's... it changes the event because i think with i think what the deal is with bickling because you are that, that's the other thing that i'd want to go is like content credit because they do allow filming even on the battles yeah. like you can literally have a gopro on in the battles and 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 things like that or just an actual have someone follow you around but i think it just becomes a different thing so i think bickling is also yeah it's a larp it's a game but it's more of a an observed game because they it's they've got like a ren fairish type vibe. there's a ren fair going yeah. on in the middle of it as exactly. well and there's like yeah. you know oh. modern electric bands playing on a stage and stuff in the middle mm. of it so like yeah i don't think i'd go there for the immersion it's exactly like you said i go to document it's it and to more see like it, a theme park you know? isn't it it's more like it, yeah, that's the vibe yeah. it's going to vibe. it's got that at that point you're going to a festival yeah. like yeah. a themed yeah. festival yeah. really um, um which is great. Like it sounds really, really cool, but it's it's a very different vibe. Do you think, than, LARP, I think. that's like, what it says? Another net. Like, 
Do you think it needs like another name because like it's it's not a very defined thing, you know? There's immersion like immersion therapy. Immersion therapy, yeah. That was another good name. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! I would take take that before you take it. <laughs> Someone could have that. That one's free. <laughs> Someone could have it. Next next po- next Empire LARP podcast that comes out. But yeah, yeah some, I... sometimes I feel like I'm explaining LARP, but it's not like explaining. D and D or World of Warcraft. Mm. It's not really yeah. something that everybody share. I think that's the issue as well that you come across as a content creator because what we're talking about an empire, even though you might be LARPing, someone else's LARP in like Argentina is a completely different experience. Yeah, like if you look uh, at the buffer like LARPs in America and stuff. Mm. Yeah, or like you don't say the parlor LARPs. They're yeah. they're completely different. Like yeah. Yeah. subcategories should have their own names. Like it should be its own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Know? I feel like um oh yeah I feel like it needs a needs a rebrand maybe we could maybe we could do it um because I, I sometimes like I put obviously just 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 because internet I put LARP because L A R P I've had a few people be like oh yeah it's L R I remember L R P and it's L R P and I'm just like no that's not what everyone's searching and that's not what the hashtags yeah. are so it's LARP I'm afraid yeah. <laughs> because I never call Empire LARP Empire LARP I just call Empire yeah. LARP because that's not the hashtag um anyway anyway folks, yeah. we are we are at uh, at time uh, while you've got a platform do you want to give a shout out to any of your uh youtube empire it, it, that you have <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even know about this the the sword fighting one do you want to give a shout out to your channels socials uh yeah sure look i'll i'll shout out way of the heron it, to be honest look in the new year, it's all going to be rebranded under one umbrella. That is Hearthfire Media. Maybe we're still of media yeah. empire minds of that. <laughs> um, I'll shout out Way of the Heron. It's all about sword fighting in very uh, fantasy ways. So don't take it out on the street. Um, Dylan, <laughs> do you want to shout out the serious stuff? Uh, yeah. So check out Hearthfire Tales. We're a D and D podcast. We have. Uh, one main running campaign, which is set in Lethwan, the land of might, magic, and metal, where basically lots of mysterious monsters are beginning to emerge, and it's up to bands of adventurers to go on tour and save the land. Um, and I guide Jim and our fellow player Ryan through it, um, and that's kind of our main campaign. And if you want something light, um, we also have seasonal content. So we have Whispering Ashes, which is where the heart fire goes out. It's not light and at it's all. It's a, and terrible. It's a, oh horror campaign that ryan runs we've got two seasons of that and um, one using the alien rpg system which is really really interesting really really good for um uh, horror role play as well because all the panic dice and you're yeah, stressing that you said it was yeah funny. yeah it's <laughs> a good one <laughs> uh, very good uh, we actually we don't use it for it's funny because we had kind of like a sci-fi one that we use D for and then a <laughs> normal one that we use alien for we use it as a basically you're infiltrating a, a cult in like backwater america yeah. Um, which is really, really interesting. And then we've got a nice heartwarming one for winter, which Jim DMs, um, which is a little more chaotic. Um, but we'll and we just recently uh recently used kids on bikes for that. So that was really, really fun as well. Kind of nice um, rules like narrative driven system, yeah. which is great. Yeah. But yeah, Hartford Tales is mainly a podcast. We're also leaning into uh, video content and we've just started streaming on Twitch as well, Monday nights at 8 p.m. uh UK time. Um, so check us out there. We recently made affiliate, which is great. Um, so we're kind of enjoying all, yeah. all, all that. Thank you. Yes. And uh, yeah, but yeah. So if you're into podcasts, check that out. And then, if or into more LARP, likely, if you're into LARP, fake swords, real feelings, and, and fake yes. swords, real. Well, I was supposed to get forget about fake swords. <laughs> no, and feelings. if you want videos on LARP, fake swords, real feelings. Uh, don't take it from us. Take it from other people who have said it's the best LARP video name in the world. <laughs> yeah, the best, the best LARP video. It really name is. Ever. Go, 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 go! Subscribe, go subscribe uh, to all of uh, Jim and Dylan's stuff. Uh, thank you very much for coming on, guys. We appreciate. Thanks you. for having us. Uh, thank you for having us. This, is, this has been great. We'll need to do it again. Uh, right, we'll say goodbye to the podcast, everyone. See you later. Bye. 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 Thanks for stopping by. If you enjoyed this episode, give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel. We are available on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. We have the Patreon if you want to go check that out. Uh, All of the links for Fake Source, Real Feelings and all of Jim and Dylan's other channels are in the description below. Please go give them a look and give them a sub if you're interested in their content. Until the next episode though, we love you very much and stay safe.